G'day Internet, and welcome back to another video. Uh, and incidentally, my new workbench, which I'll show you in a minute. Anyway, this here, this is my Omega 600. Now, I really like this machine, except for one thing. Yeah, it's got a dead motherboard, and before you say anything, no, it's not the capacitors. However, what I have here is another working 600. So let's make one good one out of two. And there you go, one Omega 600 working and happy. So I hope you enjoyed that video and uh, you're probably expecting a little more than that, weren't you? Righto, okay, so my original Omega 600 had a couple of upgrades. It had a Furia uh, accelerator card, uh, a 604 memory expansion, and an Indivision ECS uh, scan fixer uh, with VGA out. So I guess it would kind of seem a bit logical to like, you know, fit those to this one. So let's get going with that. So we're actually gonna do a bit more chopping and changing of parts uh, than you may expect. And there's a few reasons behind that. Firstly, let's just open this up so I can explain something. Let's get rid of the keyboard. And let's get rid of the floppy drive. And that's this. Down in the corners, let me unplug it. Down in the corners, uh, right here, and then also over here, are two clips, both kind of hook shaped ones. And without fail, they break. Now on this side here, it's not actually that big a deal because you've actually got a screw that goes straight through here. But it does get a little messy and a bit weak, especially over here. Now you're probably wondering, what can we do about that? They're tiny little plastic screws. Well, I've spent the last few days designing some 3D printable replacements. And that's these little guys here. Uh, the STL file will be down in the description. And these are essentially going to be glued into place for those. What you're gonna have to do though, is I used uh, a set of flush cutters, followed by a Stanley knife, followed by a file, and actually remove all the old remnants of the clip and all its supports down here and down over here as well. Uh, and once you do that, here's one I prepared earlier. It looks like this and you've got these empty spots. Now the reason I did it to this base plate is for another reason, which is if I pop the motherboard out and get rid of it, that's the dead motherboard. Um, this one's actually already been modified to put the VGA out for the Indivision ECS out through where the uh, RF modulator normally goes out. So another job we're going to be doing is actually removing the RF modulator from the good motherboard. But as you can see, we have two completely empty spots uh, either end of or either side of the bottom of the case. And these are literally just going to be glued in there. So we're going to do that first so the glue has a chance to dry while we work on other things. Now I've already filed all these out and I've cleaned up the surfaces both on them and the replacement clips with some isopropyl alcohol to make them as clean as possible because we're going to be using uh, Loctite All Plastics Super Glue which is a two-part thing. First there's a surface prep which is this guy here which looks like uh, a texture and essentially what you need to do, well exactly what you need to do is go paint this on to the surfaces that are going to be cleaned, no, sorry glued to, that you've just cleaned obviously. Get it in there, it doesn't matter, you can't see this stuff so it doesn't matter if it's not the neatest job in the world. Uh, and do the same to the other side. You want to get it right into the corners so the glue can bond as best as possible. Right, that's that. All right, now that the surface prep has had a chance to sit for uh, 60 seconds, we now simply apply the glue. And we want to apply it obviously to the three faces that are going to 
be glued. So I'm just going to do one at a time. So the left hand one, and much like anything to do with, with super glue, put it in there and hold it for a couple of seconds. And now we do the other one. Right, that's now done and we can put that to one side for a while. Another piece we're going to pinch from the old motherboard is uh, the RF shield. Again, because it's already been modified to take the VGA out. So that just snaps off. I've already bent most of the tabs uh, and I've also removed all the little uh, screws already. So that's that and we've got this. What we now want to do is we need to remove the RF shield from the good motherboard which is this guy and with the help of a flathead screwdriver we can pop the joystick connectors out, remove the retaining screw and it should relatively speaking oh. remove the memory expansion which is being held in by a bit of tape you go away, we're not going to use you and now it should just come out And of course now we have the fun job of having to remove all the retaining screws. Normally I would use a small socket for this, but I can't find it. So let's take all of these out. These are actually really loose. I think someone's been in here before, not that long ago. Bend up this one tab here and that one always gets in the way so does that one da, 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 da. tab right and all things being equal this motherboard should now slide out now that's the rf shield we actually don't need anymore because it hasn't been modified for the vga okay the next step i'm going to do is to remove the rf modulator and of course my desoldering gun has had a bit of a dummy spit and I'm going to have to do this the old fashioned way which is going to be a case of unsoldering a bunch of stuff underneath the board and then we can remove the RF modulator. Now not for a second am I going to try and tell anyone how to solder or desolder primarily because I'm completely self-taught uh, and after reading umpteenth number of YouTube comments over the years, well, I'm just not going to. So the way I do it is I simply add some fresh solder to the joints. I then hit it with the solder sucker and clean it up with some soldering wick. So let's get started. And there we go, there's the RF modulator removed, which I have absolutely zero use for. And this board now is ready to go back into the RF shield and back into the case. Now, before we put this back into the RF shield, there's one small modification I need to make, which I promise will make sense later. 
Essentially, I'm going to use some of the, this thick black mounting tape and I'm going to put it on the reverse side of the processor and if I hold it up to the light is there. Now, I promise this will make sense a bit later on in the video. Um, don't even have to worry about taking the, the backing, backing off. I just need something between it and the RF shield. So, back into its RF shield, it goes. Okay, with the board back in the bottom case, we can now, what do I want to do next? I want to fit the Indivision ECS. Now, I had an ongoing problem with mine where I constantly had to reseat the ECS to the 604 memory board. So, as you can see, being a motorcyclist, I have used zip ties to hold all that together. So the downside is this is all now kind of one part, but that's okay. We slide this guy in. We grab, we unscrew our little mounting doohickeys for the VGA connector. And this just gets mounted up the back there. And that is now in place. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is put the floppy drive back in. Floppy drives on these are quite simple, uh, but the trick is obviously to plug this cable in first, sit it in place where it needs to be, and finally, put the longer screw in there. These self tappers is one long one, and it's the one that goes through here. And that's the floppy drive in. So there's really only one more part to do, and that is the Furia um, accelerator card. Now, here's a bit of a gotcha. This is the Furia. It's only mounting, apart from some standoffs which are off at the moment, is this PLCC socket and it simply clamps down on the CPU and that's kind of it. Unfortunately mine has been in and out of my computer so many times that either the pins around the CPU, which I don't think so, or the pins in this socket have started to become either weak or they just simply don't grip as much. And my life got to the point where it was a case of turn computer on, error. Open up computer, reseat the Furia, put the case back on, flip it over, which at this point this would become unsocketed again, put all the screws back in, flip it back to the right side, turn it on, error again. So I've come up with, I hope, a solution, but let me start by putting the standoffs back onto this guy. Now, if you remember that piece of mounting tape that I put between the board and the RF shield, well, on the bottom of the RF shield, there is also a small square 3D printed spacer that sits between the RF shield and the actual case. And essentially, we are going to make a Furia sandwich. Um, this now, if we just, for safety's sake, plug in the floppy drive first, this mounts as per normal. Dun, 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 dun. And make sure it's seated good. I find it's good to reach around the back and make sure it's in there. Now, what we want to do is this. If we take this 3D printed part, which is another thing I've been designing over the last couple of days, it is simply this, and you might be able to tell by the shape of it, there's already some bits of tape on it where I've been doing some test fits, 
This fits over the rear side of that PLCC socket and there's gaps in it for the solder joints. And that there is the angle, which is 15.3 degrees if you're interested, of the underside of the keyboard. And essentially we are going to put that there and the keyboard down on top. And in theory, that's going to keep everything nicely sandwiched together and secure. Now, to mount this, this is the way I do it. I actually end up sticking it to the underside of the keyboard. And what I use is this. I have this thin craft style double-sided sticky tape, which I've used for various projects and stuff. And this doesn't have to be particularly permanent. All we want to do is to be able to stick this to the Furia long enough so it do, and strong enough so it doesn't get bumped around as we first fit the keyboard back on top. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to stick a little bit there and a little bit there. If it hangs off the edges, it doesn't really matter. You can always trim it or even just leave it. And purely for safety's sake, I'm going to put in a bit in the middle as well. And now we get to the most fun part, which is, of course, trying to peel the backing off the double side sticky tape without removing the actual tape. Yeah, see, don't move. That one came off altogether, but it's not the end of the world. And the last one, right. So now what we do is this, make sure you get your orientation right, because these cutouts actually line up to a few resistors and stuff that's on the back of this. Let me get rid of that old bit of mounting tape. And this sits right there. Now this has been designed so this edge here should line up exactly with the edge of the Fourier's uh, PCB and that simply goes right there. We now grab our keyboard, wherever I put it, and we get this ready. Excuse the drink, it's another 40 plus degree day here in Canberra. And we want to reach for our thick mounting tape again. And these have been sized to take into account the thickness of the tape. And we simply want to cut yay much. And we want to stick this here. And then play the double-sided sticky tape game again, which always infuriates me. So I'm going to grab a Stanley knife and see if I can get an edge with it. And now what we want to do is we want to carefully fit our top and all things being equal we should be able to press it's about here and just press down and that should have stuck the Furrier uh, mount doohickey you can clean up some of that temporary uh, double sided sticky tape exactly where we want it so it sits straight down on there. The last thing I want to do now is to fit my compact flash hard drive and if we line up pin 1 with pin 1 so the red line of the cable is towards you and just make sure that's all happy and down And if we kind of fold him out of the way as best we can, it really isn't the best room for this. We are finally ready to put the 
keyboard back on for good, which of course involves dealing with this ribbon cable socket at the back. Just get the floppy drive cable out of the way. Slot you in, carefully balance, grab a screwdriver, carefully push down one side, two side, one side, two side, and there's that. Now, mine at least now starts to get a little tricky to put together because like any A600, you've got to plug the LEDs in at the front here. But I also have now have a compact flash card wanting to poke its way out the side. And we also have fresh new clips, which for the same reason that they always break, are going to just be annoying enough to get this all back together. And what I usually do on mine at this point is find the flathead screwdriver, kind of poke my CF card out of the way, get this to clip down on its fresh new clips, and we're good. We can just put the screws back in now. And there we go, we're all done. This time we have a complete working Amiga 600. Um, I've uh, put my compact flash hard drive and it's booted straight to um, 3.1. The only thing I didn't show, which I forgot to, uh, was I had to swap my kickstart ROM uh, from the 2.05 I think that was in this and had to put my 3.1 in. Um, other than that, it's all ready to rock and roll. And if you give me a second to play some musical cables, the Indivision ECS is working like a champ as well. So everything is now sorted and I can get back to playing some games on my Amiga 600. Now, I'll uh, put a link to all the STL files for the stuff I had to 3D print down in, down in the description. Uh, if you like the video, please subscribe, hit like, share with your friends. Uh, and But for today, I think that'll do it. See you in the next video. Now, I did promise a quick look at my renovated office. Now, this is not a big room. The usable space in it is about two and a half meters by two and a half meters, and I have a lot of junk. This is one end of the workbench, which I made myself. Uh, the frame is simply made out of 75 millimeter by 35 millimeter, just cheap pine uh, and I'll probably end up painting it. That's the blue wood you can see there. Uh, and then 16 millimeter melamine uh, bench top. Uh, that bit that the computer screen is sitting on uh, is the bit that I actually dropped on both my toes two and a half weeks ago, which resulted in a trip to emergency. Um, once I finished the bench, I then added this return on it, so I had somewhere to put my hi-fi and also to stash a set of drawers, which fit very nice, and the speakers are hidden underneath. Um, there is a whole lot of storage underneath, which you can't see, which are the cube box uh, shelves, which you get from Bunnings. Any Australian should know that. Um, and I actually had two sets of 4x4. Four four. They were massive. So I cut them in half, uh, each of them, so there's two lots of four by two now underneath the bench and I use the remainder to make a hutch which goes over the bench and there's some lighting underneath there. Uh, so I've got some little nooks uh, up the top plus plenty of space. Now when I made them, the height between the bench and the hutch just wasn't big enough. Like I couldn't put my modder underneath, I couldn't fit a CRT underneath. Um, so if you might notice there under the uh, center support is actually a Besser block painted white and it turned out to be really really solid because I like to over, over engineer things uh, and it did the job. So if we keep going around, uh, this is now around to the other end of the bench. So I have my 32 inch LCD uh, wall mounted to keep it out of the way. Uh, and the hutch uh, continues around there. On the opposite wall is, well, my wall of toys. Um, my toy collection is always kind of scattered all over the place on random bits of furniture. And it's just 
awesome to be able to finally put it all in one place and have it on display. Uh, these are just simply uh, the shelves that you get where you put the metal strips on the wall and then the hooks and then the shelves just sit on it. Again, all from Bunnings. Um, the bottom shelf is completely dedicated to my video games. So most of it is my Xbox, uh, original Xbox collection, which is, oh, I don't know, about 200 or so. Uh, and then there's some PlayStation and my Master System and Mega Drive games right down the bottom. Uh, the majority of the toy space is taken up by my Action Man collection, if you look. Um, that's primarily because, well, Action Man are 12-inch figures. They take up a lot of space. But I have got right at the very end, which you probably can't see, is my vintage Star Wars, then my Star Wars Rebel collection, and of course uh, one of the Inquisitors, the female one, has fallen over because she doesn't stand up for anything. Uh, followed by my Ninja Turtle, so I've got the uh, the six inch uh, fully posable Playmates. Um, I've got the knockoff NECA uh, comic foursome, uh, and then my vintage Ninja Turtles. Uh, and below that is uh, He-Man, my recently started uh, Transformers collection, and uh, a little bit more Ninja Turtles on the end. Now if we come all the way back into the doorway, um, I redid the floors as well. They're just the um, wood-ish vinyl um, planks uh, straight down onto the concrete. Uh, we've got them through most of the house and we really like them. Um, and then the whole room got a new coat of paint. It's simply just white. There's my ghetto light stand. Um, and that's, that's kind of it. That is my new office workshop man cave, whatever you want to call it. All right, cool, thanks.